Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session. My name is Sadek. I'll be your uh, your host here on today's uh, MBA Spotlight Series session. Uh, this is the second second hour of, uh, of this session. We did Harvard earlier. Now we're the, we are with the Chicago booth, and we will be following it up with the Haas later, as well as the uh, Zoom Q and A Haas breakout session. Don't forget to check that booth out. But now let's focus on booth. Uh, thank you, Kara, for being here. Um, before we get started, just want to mention to our um, people they are watching us that they can feel free to ask any questions on the YouTube channel. We, I know we had someone from Chicago booth answering some of the, some of the questions. Um, we will also have, uh, first of all, a presentation and then a Q&A session. And last but not least, please like this video if you like it. Uh, if you don't like it, make sure to mention that. Uh, we will be uh, happy to take your feedback into account. Kara, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Sadek. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, as Sadek mentioned, my colleague Anna Chalfin is on the uh, YouTube channel. So feel free to type questions. And of course, we'll do a verbal Q&A toward the end. Uh, my name is Kara Northcutt. I am a Senior Director of Employer Engagement and Admissions at Chicago Booth. I'm thrilled to, to meet with you all today. I'm sure you're joining from all over the world. So good morning, good evening, good day, whatever it may be. I happen to be in uh, Northwest Indiana, which is close to Chicago. So very close to where that the University of Chicago campus are. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't be more thrilled to be with you today. So I'll go through a presentation and I will also give some updates throughout about what our plan is for the autumn quarter, because I'm sure many of you are thinking about that, particularly those who might be outside of the U.S. So I'll be sure to address those questions throughout. Okay, so I want to start with kind of the view from, you know, 40,000 uh, feet, as we often say here, here in the U.S. So Chicago Booth actually has four different ways that you can earn your degree. And this is very intentional. You'll, you'll hear a lot as, as today as I talk about, like, flexibility and the breadth of choice you'll have. And that choice really starts, like, right now in deciding which program format is the best, best for you, both personally and professionally. Uh, so I'll give brief descriptions, but of course, ask questions. Um, and I will say we'll focus primarily on the evening, weekend, and full-time programs today. But of course, we can answer any questions about executive. Um, so the number one thing that to remember from this slide, if you remember nothing else, is that they all yield the exact same degree. The same faculty teach across all programs. So again, no matter which route is best for you, you're going to get a Chicago Booth MBA. Uh, so we have three part-time programs. Uh, one of those, as I already mentioned, is our executive MBA program. We have a campus in uh, downtown Chicago called the Gleacher Center and a campus in London and in Hong Kong. So this is the program that's going to be um, diverge a little bit from some of the format and flexibility that I'll speak about. Uh, but just briefly, it's generally for people a little bit further in their career who want to keep working while they go to school. So it's more of what we call a lockstep cohorted program. And uh, on average, people tend to have, you know, 13 years of work experience. So again, if you're, you're not quite sure what's the right fit, we can always have those conversations after the fact um, um, individually. Uh, the other two part-time MBA programs are essentially identical. They're the evening and weekend MBA programs. Um, the only the main difference is that weekend students uh, tend to live all over the United States and commute to Chicago for classes on the weekend. Uh, but they're really designed, much like the executive, for those who want to continue working while they get their MBA. Uh, say you're in a job or a career path that you really love, you don't want to step away from that, this is a great option. Maybe your company, maybe you're fortunate to have some company tuition support, making this a viable option as well. Uh, for the part-time programs, the average years of work experience is, is more like the five, seven, eight year range. It's a very wide range, um, so average rather, very wide range. Uh, so again, it just if you want to think about working, you do have to be, I should specify, uh, living in the U.S. on uh, as a permanent resident, citizen, or on a valid work visa uh, for the evening weekend programs. And of course, the full-time program, which we'll talk mostly about today, is your traditional program where you, it's a two-year program where you would relocate to wonderful Chicago for a couple years and um, fully immerse yourself in the program. And uh, what's, what's really nice about evening, weekend, and full-time, it's actually the exact same curriculum. Same curricular requirements, same faculty, same classes. So it kind of hits at that point again that no matter what route is best for you, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to find a place at Booth and get that high, high quality education. So a little bit more, this kind of just is a, a snapshot of, of the differences in the program. As mentioned, full time is two years. You apply to matriculate in the autumn quarter. Um, and it's uh, most, if not all, students do a summer internship. 
So that's a great way to really explore the you know career path you might be interested in and um, get that real world hands on experience. It might turn into a your your full time job afterwards, or it might be something that you just try out for a little bit. Completely up to you how you want to utilize that that internship. Uh, the evening and weekend programs are unique in that they're really flexible when it comes to format. So most students do take two courses a quarter, and again, while they're working, and they can finish in two and a half years if you do that consecutively. However, you have five years to complete the degree. So if you need to take a quarter off for a work assignment, um, maybe you're getting married or having children, which is very common for our, our students in the evening weekend program, you can take that time off and, and really just, you know, as long as you finish in five years, you're able to do so. Um, and a quick note on that, we lock your tuition in for four years. So if you matriculate this summer, your tuition is the same for four years. So something to think about uh, with timing in that. And as I mentioned before, the executive is much more structured. It's a 21 month program and it's uh, lock, step and cohorted, which means that you will go through primarily or, or for the most part, the same uh, students will be in your classes throughout the duration. So, for example, there's 90 or so that matriculate here in the United States. You're going to get to know that, that group of students incredibly well as you'll go through those experiences together. Um, and we are very hopeful that for the, you know, the coming years, when, when you would be at Booth, no matter which program, we'll be able to have all of our international programs as much as we can reinstated. Um, as, as I mentioned before, I'll give updates for autumn. We, are, we will be fully back in, in uh, person for the autumn quarter starting autumn 2021. We'll have some virtual classes still available for those who need it. Maybe if you can't get to the U.S. because of visa concerns, issues along those lines, um, we will, again, we're fully back in person. And then we'll also have some online options for those who really need it. But we're very excited to get back to, to the in-person. Okay, so I'm going to talk about really what a differentiates and really sets apart the Chicago Booth experience. And this, the Chicago approach to business education, it holds true for all of the programs I just described. So again, no matter which route you choose, these are the three, you know, really three uh, core values that, that you're really going to see come through in the program in a variety of ways. So the first one is that we ground discoveries and data that points the way. So you might hear, you know, different things about different schools out there and that booth is rigorous and analytic, which is true, of course, but we also have a lot of fun and social and collaborative um, elements that I'll get into as well. But of course, we uh, really rely on data. Um, and, and I'm assuming many of you do too, no matter whether you're in marketing, whether you're in finance, working for a nonprofit, I'm sure you're all looking at data these days. We know that that's just the way, the way, the way it has been, the way it will be. So you're going to get really comfortable with that at Booth, even if you have a liberal arts background. Totally fine if you don't have a really, you know, specific or, or um, you know, education-wise analytical background. That's totally fine. You're, you're going to be able to build that skill set at Booth. Uh, so, and data comes in many different forms. Of course, there's going to be Excel spreadsheets and models in certain classes, but it also comes in the form of uh, research. Um, so a lot of our uh, faculty that teach like our behavioral science classes have social psychology degrees. So they're bringing in uh, data and research on decision making, um, how, how we make decisions, how we can influence other individuals. That's also based in data. So it's not all just, you know, hard, hard numbers, things like that. It also is a lot of research that comes into the program, which we think really prepare. We think we know really prepares you for your current job, your future. And, you know, 20 years, years down the road, you're going to be able to ask the right questions, analyze things, look for the right data, be able to check your own, you know, preconceived notions and biases at the door and really come up with the best solutions. Uh, the second one is that we champion your intellectual freedom through choice and a breadth of experience. So this means, as I already spoke about, your first choice, you get to choose which program format is best for you. And, and then beyond that, once you're in the program, specifically evening, weekend, and full time, you essentially get to pick and choose all of your courses. We do not have a core curriculum. However, we have what we call foundational and function areas. Uh, so how that works in the evening, weekend, and full time programs is that everyone, for example, is required to take a financial accounting course. However, if you have an accounting background or degree or a CPA, you can opt out of that intro level financial accounting course and take a more advanced replacement. The same is true for statistics and for microeconomics. And our whole purpose is that you get to pick and choose the classes that best fit where you are right now in your career and based on your previous education and classes that you want to take. So if you have a business degree, for example, we, we don't want to have to you know, have you retake all of those courses that you feel like you've got really strong knowledge of. 
Uh, so again, that's how the foundations work. So no core curriculum, but there are foundations and um, functions. So function areas are, are kind of the same functions you would not kind of, they are the same functions you would think about in your, your, your business, different verticals, lines of business, however you want to think about it. And um, so those are things like strategic management, marketing, finance, entrepreneurship. So within those areas, you're going to be able to, you know, pick and choose classes that again, best fit your interests. So um, it's, it's really, really flexible. And, and I, I'll get to the guidance piece. You're not left alone in all of this decision, I promise. Um, but we think it really um, leads to an environment where students are really engaged and, and really in choosing the activities and classes that are most relevant to them, even, you know, personally and professionally. Uh, so beyond the classroom, there's also, you know, countless ways you can get involved and, and we don't, you know, force any of this on you. We we allow you a whole roadmap of, of things that you can choose from to you know pick and choose the student clubs that are most interesting to you personally, professionally, whatever it may be. And again, I'll get, I'll get much more into the, the student life piece. Um, and I apologize. I forgot to mention one of ex, uh, important curricular thing. So beyond the foundations and functions, we have 13 concentrations. So concentrations are not as intensive as like a major that you might have pursued in undergrad, but they're, you know, typically three or four courses. So these are great ways to go deeper into the areas you're most interested in, you know, be that, you know, like I was talking about before, entrepreneurship, marketing, decision making, whatever that might be, you can really go deeper with those concentrations. Most people end up with three or four concentrations. So it's really easy um, to, to get those, to some courses cross list. Uh, so, for example, entrepreneurial finance and private equity counts with entrepreneurship and finance. So there's a really cool way that you can kind of tailor your degree. And um, and like I said before, you're not alone in that. You have academic advisors and a lot of support, um, you know, faculty, second year students in the full time program, a lot of people that can help guide those decisions. Uh, which brings me to the last uh, uh, tenant or value, which is our we empower each individual through uh, providing a collaborative community. So again, we're really giving you the individual choice and we want you to pursue what's most, um, what you're most passionate about, but you're never alone. So like I said before, the academic advisors do coaching appointments all the time throughout the year just to make sure you're on track, but to also help have a discussion like, should I or should I not opt out of this class? They can help you with that, show you the syllabi, look at all the course reviews um, so you can select courses, you know, maybe you prefer group work or maybe you're more of an individual learner. So you can even go that granular and choose courses based on learning styles. So you have a ton of support and online resources that you can do on your own on demand as well, which is really nice. Um, and beyond that, the community is really what makes Booth special, in my opinion. I have been, in many people's opinion, I guess, I have been at Booth now for almost 13 years and I'm so proud to work there. And, and people often ask me, what's the best part? And it's absolutely the people. The faculty are so approachable. There's, you know, career services, uh, alumni relations, student life. There's all these uh, teams that are specifically designed to make sure you have a great experience in your MBA and beyond, you know, coming to those alumni relations and advancement individuals. Uh, so we really just kind of build you up and, and lift you up as you go throughout the program and support you through your challenges, celebrate your successes. And it really is a, a, a wonderful environment to be in um, while you're a student and, of course, as an alumni. So I'm going to go shift gears a little bit and go into the kind of the impact, like, why are you doing this MBA? I'm sure it has a lot to do with your career, right? It's obvious. So whether you're looking to change careers or advance careers, you can do it. So I will say um, kind of a, a tip, if you're looking for a more significant career change, I would definitely pursue the full-time MBA program. Uh, because of that internship piece that I mentioned earlier, that's a really great way to make that shift. If you're looking to go from, you know, something like working in a nonprofit to being a product manager in big tech. That's a pretty big shift, right? So you would really want to fully immerse and go into those internship programs. And if you're looking, you know, more advancing, of course, you could do that through full time. But evening and weekend tends to be an executive tends to be those who are looking more to advance in their career, maybe not make those as, as dramatic of shifts. Um, but as you can see, we have alumni all over the world, 120 countries represented of our 54,000 alumni, and they're truly a part of your network. They're so responsive, incredibly helpful and dedicated. Um, and one silver lining of this last uh, you know, year of our virtual lives, we've really been able to engage with even more alumni, have alumni from all over the world, you know, be guest speakers, things like that. So those things will continue on even when we're back to our in-person learning.
Um, but as you can see here, variety of recognizable companies, uh, Morningstar, Miller Coors, excuse me, Discover, Walgreens, et cetera, just a small list of the many, many companies. And, and if Anna um, is, is on the chat, she can post our employment report, which I'm going to show some data now, but it's all available online. So for our evening, weekend, and full-time programs, we gather and report data every year about our employment. Um, so this for the full-time program, there's data about internship placements, geography, salary, signing bonuses, everything you want to know, you can find on our websites. And, and again, Anna, if you hear me, you can post those. If not, we can always follow up with you. Uh, so as you can see on the full-time side, really high percentages of individuals receiving their full-time job offers. And I'm really, really proud to say that this has maintained on pace with like, you know, the 2020 class, I should say, has maintained at the same pace as the pre-COVID times. So companies, of course, also had to shift how they were recruiting and recruiting and hiring um, to mainly do it virtual. But our students have still been incredibly successful. I mean, there were very few, even in the very early days of the pandemic here in the United States, like about a year ago, summer of 2020, you know, a handful of internships fell through. But we had alumni reaching out saying, hey, what can we do to help? How can we help the students that are you know, going through this right now? So we were able to, to get people placed and just a great example of how the alumni and career services work together to really, again, make sure that you can help um, you help you achieve those career goals. I um, mean, in the evening weekend program, uh, not 100% are looking for a, a career change. Some are actually just looking to, you know, get better at their current job, which is absolutely respectable and, fi and fine. We appreciate that. But of course, people are looking to change. Uh, there are a lot of people who get promoted even while they're in the program. Um, I should specify too, the data on the evening weekend side, we survey at graduation and then a year out. So if you think about evening, weekend, you're working, you might have a family, you're going to school concurrently, not a lot of time to search for that next job. So some students wait to that year after graduation and people start businesses, change organizations. Some people change industry function and organization. So a lot of different ways that you can you can manage this and, and career services, they're really there for you from day one. Like after you go through orientation, you can start meeting with career coaches. We even have alumni, um, both senior and recent alumni that help serve as like career mentors, uh, particularly in the evening weekend program on the full-time side the second year students are an incredible resource for you as you go through internship recruiting because uh, it takes a lot of practice if you're looking at you know consulting for example you're going to have to really practice those case interviews so you have a great group of people there that are dedicated both staff and students to, to help you through that so again you can find more even more granular data on our website but just want to share some high level career stats Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about student life, and I've been alluding to this already, um, but it is just the best part of the program, honestly. Like when you ask students and alumni, you know, what they got out of it, they got their best friends, future business partners, and just really had a well-rounded experience because there's just so much to offer. Chicago has so much to offer. It's a wonderful city. I know you might hear about, you know, crazy winters and things like that. I promise you it's not that bad. I will absolutely give you advice on good, good boots and hats and things like that. But it's really a wonderful city because there's a wide variety of industries represented from startups to healthcare to finance. So you can really get a lot of those experiences in Chicago. Um, it's a city of neighborhoods, which I, I really appreciate. I've been in Chicago, living in Chicago over 16 years at this point. I've lived in a few neighborhoods. They all have their own unique feel and amazing restaurants and, and you know, the lake, of course. There's just so much we could talk about. Um, Chicago really values its green space. So there's a lot of parks and recreation, things like that going on, even throughout the year, even, even in the wintertime. So again, Happy to talk more about Chicago to anybody who has any questions or hesitation, but it really is a phenomenal place. And of course, ask our students, those who particularly moved to Chicago, what their experience has been like. Um, so we have two campuses. One is in Hyde Park, which is about seven or eight miles south of downtown Chicago. This is the main University of Chicago campus. It is absolutely gorgeous. A lot of Gothic architecture, just a really, really cool. And I mean, the history of the University of Chicago, I could give a 40 minute presentation on, on just that. It's a phenomenal place. So and no matter what program you're in, definitely go down to Hyde Park at some point and, and check it out. And then, of course, we have the Gleacher Center, which is downtown Chicago. So if you're familiar with downtown, it's basically on Michigan Avenue and the river. So really close to the lake. It's a very convenient location. Um, a lot of full-time students actually live downtown, maybe use Gleacher during the day to study, and then maybe take the bus or, or um, ride chairs down to Hyde Park. There's a lot of different ways that students decide to um, manage their time, whether they live downtown or Hyde Park. And again, our students are more than happy to answer those questions as well. Okay, so once you're in the program, 
you're going to have, it might be overwhelming at first, even, which I think is a good thing, like so many clubs and activities and organizations that you can engage with. So we have over 45 um, student groups in the, on the evening weekend side, over 70 on the full-time side. And these are everything from, you know, impact investing, the consulting club, uh, there's, you know, marketing, uh, pretty much every industry you can think of has, has a club and they focus on guest speakers, really prepping you on that career piece. And then, of course, there's the fun and social. There's Wine Club, which is very, very popular. They've even maintained a lot of their activities virtually, doing wine tastings and, you know, getting bottles of wine, shipping them to their members and things like that. Uh, yoga, you know, a lot of exercise classes and things like that over the last year and a half. And then, of course, armed forces groups, our pride and outreach groups, serving LGBTQ plus and allies of, of such groups, women's groups, our um, black student organizations. So really just anything you're interested in, you're, you're going to find a place within those groups. Uh, so my advice is always get involved in, of course, a couple of professional that really fit your career goals, but then join something that's out of your comfort zone, you know, something that you maybe. Uh, you know, maybe you're not a runner, but you want to join the running club. They will welcome you with open arms and then help you, you know, go through the the, the exercises they do and the charity events that they might be involved in. Um, most of these activities for full time do take place down in Hyde Park at the main campus during the daytime. That's when full time students, you know, tend to have a lot of availability uh, on the evening weekend side. They, they vast majority take place on Saturdays. Uh, as I mentioned before, our weekend students in non-pandemic times travel to Chicago each week for class, and most evening students are local to the Chicagoland area. So we have a lot of those events take place on Saturdays and, of course, Friday evenings, um, you know, along those lines, trying to be really mindful of when our students are available. Um, but th this is how you're really going to get to know each other and get to know, you know, get to bond with your students, um, your, your fellow classmates, as well as the student life and the career service liaisons that help you run all those organizations. So again, well, um, and Anna, if you're able to hear me, you could always post the uh, ask a student link in the chat. Great questions to ask students as well about the, the how they got involved and what they that what they got out of it. And of course, back to our dedicated leadership teams. I've mentioned a few already. Uh, some I haven't mentioned yet. We have a diversity and inclusion in, uh, group. We, in recent years, um, added uh, hired some wellness professionals who, this was before the pandemic, but obviously we saw a, re a really good uptick in individuals utilizing the wellness services, which we, we highly recommend. Like we're, again, we're all here to make sure you have a great experience. We know you're gonna have struggles. We know there's gonna be difficult times. We want you to feel comfortable asking for help. We are absolutely here for you no matter what you're going through academically, personally, professionally. We can help you find, find the right individuals to connect with, to get those questions answered and, and help you through. So again, academic services, career services, um, our leadership development team um, helps, you know, runs all those uh, required leadership um, sessions that you'll go through throughout your first quarter or year, depending on which program you're in. And then you can do individual coaching with those. If you, if you really wanna focus on leadership, there's just so many teams and individuals um, that, that you're going to have access to. And we're all very excited to be back working. And I really miss seeing all my colleagues around. So we're all excited to be back in person this, uh, this autumn as well. So kind of zooming out a little bit, so this is very much connected to leadership teams and student life. But I, I, there's often questions about entrepreneurship, social impact, et cetera. So I want to talk about centers. So University of Chicago has now seven, if not more, centers. And these are three on the slide that are student facing. So these are really um, kind of a, a collaboration of faculty, um, companies outside of Booth and companies connect with Booth, students and alumni. Uh, so the Kilt Center for Marketing focuses on just that, marketing. And lately they've been focusing a lot on the uh, how, how tech and marketing are really merged now. A lot of students are interested in product management. So, you know, focusing a lot on those areas, keeping up on trends in marketing, data-driven marketing, et cetera. Um, there's mentorships, there's even some scholarships that are specific to marketing. Um, Kilts Fellows is what they're called. Um, and another kind of fun fact about Kilts is that years ago, Nielsen um, selected Kilts and Booth to house other data. So it's a great data set that faculty have access to, they can use for the research, bring into the classroom cases, et cetera. Uh, the middle one, the Polsky Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, is a university-wide program now. It started at Booth, expanded to university. We have partnerships with the University of Illinois, at Urbana-Champaign, for example. Focuses all on entrepreneurship. So we have um, investors in residence, entrepreneurs in residence. If you think if you already have a business going or you think that's what you want to do, take advantage of the Polsky Center. They're absolutely a wonderful group. They do a lot of programming just about, you know, different topics in, in entrepreneurship. And then the, I'd say the biggest thing they're known for is the annual new venture challenge. 
Uh, we just celebrated our 25th year, which we're very excited about of the New Venture Challenge. And this is a it's kind of like it is a class. So you have to you know apply to it. You have to have your business plan, get selected for the New Venture Challenge. So then there's a course that you take a seminar that you take along with it as you do the competition. So it's a new business plan competition. There's real prize money, significant amounts um, at that that you can go through. Even if you're not first place, you're going to be in front of actual angel investors, which is really phenomenal access. And you're going to have a lot of prep leading up to that and how to pitch, how to do your, your you know sales pitch, that sort of thing, and get feedback, how to field those tough questions from investors. So it's just a great incubator, essentially, is a good way to think about it. And then finally, the Rustandi Center for Social Sector Innovation has similar uh, projects as Polsky. We have a new social venture challenge, just as I described the new venture challenge, but for mission-driven or nonprofit organizations. Um, so it's all about social impact. Again, whether it's nonprofit or not, um, there's a lot of aspects that, that would be relevant that the Rustandi puts on. Uh, they have the annual conference called Onboard. So this conference is all about board leadership. So as, as you may be aware, boards um, could use some more diversity and, and whether it's, you know, experience of years, gender, race, whatever it may be, diversity is, is great for boards. So this, these, they talk about topics like that and how to get young individuals like yourselves or early career individuals to um, get involved in boards so you can hopefully have that experience and have a, have a larger impact throughout your career. And then one other very cool thing that came up this year and partnership with the Rustandi Center, our social services and Harris School of P Public Policy is there's this new Obama Foundation Scholars Program. It's a year long program for individuals across evening, weekend, full time, et cetera, that are in their final year, essentially. So they can do the scholarship program, really working with the Obama Center that's being um, being built in Chicago as we speak and working on uh problems and challenges and hopefully solutions for areas of the south side of Chicago and really globally. So, you know, brief descriptions on these three centers, but really just want to make sure you're aware of the, again, the full breadth of, of uh, options you're going to have. Okay, so just a couple more slides and we'll go to questions here. I'm sure a lot of your questions are around the application requirements. Uh, so as you can see on the slide for the full-time program, we do require the GMAT or GRE. You can absolutely take the online version, at home version, totally fine. Whatever is easiest and most convenient for you. And for the evening and weekend programs, uh, about a year or two ago, we also started accepting what's called the executive assessment, which is a newer exam that was designed for executive MBA programs. It's uh, designed by GMAC, who also oversees the GMAT exam. Uh, so you can find, of course, all the average test scores, all that information online. And, um, you know, as you're as you're going through that, the GMAT or GRE is one of many things we look at. It's not the the biggest factor or anything along those lines. I know it's easy to get anxious about it. And of course, prep and do that. If you need to take it again, take it again. We always take your highest score. So, you know, my, my advice is to take some time, focus on your, your entrance exam first, then let the rest of the application come after that. So you're not, you know, pulled in too many mental directions, I guess. Of course, we want to see your resume and typically look for a one page, just seeing, you know, progression from when you graduated undergrad and potentially graduate school as well. What's your progression been? Uh, one tip on the resume is keep in mind the individuals reading your application, like myself, might have not it might have very little knowledge of your industry. So be mindful of jargon or acronyms, things like that, that that we might have to look up. Right. So it's, I think about it as a resume for anyone. Anyone can re read and be able to get a good sense of what you do, even if they're not in your industry. Uh, we require two letters of recommendation. Um, these are all submitted online. So in your application, you, you put in your recommender's information and then they're sent links. They take care of it all online as well. It's very, very uh, straightforward. Uh, one ideally is from um, a professional source, um, like your direct supervisor, particularly for evening weekend. We do really want to see a direct supervisor because we do expect you to keep working uh, for the full time program. That's a common choice as well for your professional um, for one of your professional letters. If you cannot or aren't comfortable asking your direct supervisor, we completely understand. Just explain that in the application and why you chose maybe your mentor, a previous boss, whatever it may be. Uh, the second letter is really up to you. Um, they do tend to be professional in nature. Say if you've had a couple jobs, again, a previous um, a previous supervisor, a mentor, or maybe if you're a little bit um, earlier career and, and you haven't had those sort of experiences quite yet, it could be a colleague perhaps that's maybe you know one step higher than you um, in the hierarchy, or someone you're deeply um, involved, something you're deeply involved with outside. So if you are on a board, for example, or deeply involved in a community engagement activity, you could choose some someone from that aspect of your life as well. Um, again, the application you will explain to us why you chose those individuals. 
Uh, transcripts are straightforward. You just have to upload unofficial at this point. We just need to see the courses you've taken, grades earned, and the, uh, your degree conferral date and what degree was conferred. And um, uh, they do have to be translated. So again, all these details are on our website, but that part's, you know, pretty much you upload those once you have them. And then there's, you know, short answer essays. These essays are not cumbersome. We're not trying to trick you, uh, you know, on the full-time side. One is, of course, you know, kind of the short-term, long-term professional goals. The second one is like, what else, you know, tell us more about you. Like who, what makes you, you, like, what are you passionate about? You know, you can always pull from an experience you had that shaped you. There's many different ways you can approach that, but I promise we're just, we're just looking to get to know you. That really is the bottom line. We want to get to know who you are and then hopefully we can, you know, envision you as an active student and alumni at Booth. Uh, the interview component is um, by invitation. So after you submit your application, there's an initial review and then you find out if you're invited to interview. Um, interviews have, of course, been 100% uh, virtual for the last year and a half. We're hoping to reintegrate some in-person interviews as soon as we can. We just don't quite have that final OK yet to do so. Uh, but we absolutely promise you we'll have a virtual version because that's just going to be most convenient. We have no preference if you you know interview on Zoom or in person, no preference either way. It won't have you know any any detrimental impact if you can't make it in person. We totally understand that. Um, and the interviews are a lot of fun. There was students or alumni who have not read your application. They just get your resume. And it's really just a converse, very conversational nature. I, I think it's, I, mean, I really appreciate, I like hosting interviews and interviewing candidates, something I really like to do. And I think our candidates have a good experience as well. And then finally, upcoming deadlines. We recently had our, our autumn deadline for the evening weekend program. Our next one is for winter, uh, late September. Uh, for full-time, we have rounds, which you might be familiar with. So there are three rounds you can apply to, all applying to start in the autumn of you know, 2022 at this point. So that first round is in September, second in January, and third in April. And on our website, you can see the actual decision deadlines. When you're here, we, we have this all mapped out for you uh, so you can plan. Um, we get a lot of questions, you know, which one should I apply to, which is more or less competitive. And it really it's all about your timing. If you are ready, you feel your application is at its peak for round one, absolutely great. Apply for round one. If not, it's no big deal at all to apply for one of the later rounds. We admit off of every round. Uh, I, mean, I do typically advise shoot for round one or round two if you can for full time, but there's always circumstances and um, that don't allow that. And there's individuals, like I said before, they get admitted off of every round. Okay, finally, I just want to talk about how to engage with us. So beyond today, I know I speak quickly. I know I'm giving a lot of information. We have um, continue with our large suite of virtual events. So Anna, who's on, on the chat, has been hosting an awesome series of AMAs, Ask Me Anythings, um, with current students, different groups, et cetera, live chats, virtual information ses sessions. And we've also been really proud over the last year and a half of our masterclass series. So obviously we have not been able to have in-person class visits. So in lieu of that, we've been doing um, master classes are about an hour and a half long and they're a snippet of an actual class. We have a host of recordings on our website and we will start these back up again uh, during our summer quarter. And these will continue even once we're back in person. So we're gonna maintain a lot of these virtual opportunities even once we're able to be back in person. Um, so my, my last point on that and then we'll go to Q&A. So as I mentioned, classes will be back in person starting autumn. They're actually even in person for the summer quarter as well for those who want to. Um, but we're, we still don't have exact um, dates or timelines for when we can have prospective students visiting. Keep an eye on our website. Keep in touch with us. We will send out emails if you're on our email listserv once we're able to do so. We're hopeful that later this summer we can give some tours, have some in-person events, and then once the quarter's back in, we can hopefully have people back in the classroom, but we just don't know yet. Just to be, to be honest, we're still working all that out here, you know, based on state and city guidelines and university guidelines. So something to keep an eye on, but don't fret. We have plenty of ways that you can engage virtually. All right, and with that, I will stop my share and Sadi can ask me some questions. Thank you, Kara, for, for the very thorough and comprehensive presentation. Okay. It looks like I can't stop my share. I'll just answer questions on this slide. Um, Anna has been, actually, has been actually also doing a great job answering all the questions on YouTube, uh, which makes my job harder because then I need to pick up <laughs> questions that uh, haven't been answered yet or maybe questions that are really important and maybe we should uh, uh, reiterate on them. Um, but let me just start off with, uh, let's say, the $1 million question, which is, from the which comes from the forum and it says what differentiates differentiates Chicago from the other universities. Absolutely, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. And it really comes down to that Chicago approach, particularly the flexibility. 
So you will not find a more flexible program where you are able to tailor and customize your curriculum. So as I mentioned, we don't have a core curriculum. There are no courses that are required for all students with one exception, and that's our leadership programming. So everyone does have to participate in the leadership programming, which is also very unique. I believe we were the first, don't quote me on this, but one of the first, if not the first business school to integrate and require leadership training. And that's all about you know, helping you figure out who you are as a leader. We're not gonna stand up and teach you this is how to be a leader. It's look inward, find out your strengths, your areas of improvement, those sort of things. And I think that's really unique as well. And it kind of exemplifies how, uh, you know, Booth really looks at the individual, looks at your individual um, characteristics, your strengths, your, your passions, whatever it may be, and then gives you that roadmap to really tailor your degree. Um, and then of course, just, yeah, the top of the faculty are just second to none. And of course, I would I would recommend look, you know, watching those master classes and just how accessible they are and how accessible the community is. I mentioned I had been at Booth for almost 13 years. I have blindly emailed many faculty who maybe I hadn't known in person or alumni I've never met before. I would say I have a 95% response rate within 48 hours. It's just such a like a, it's just pay it forward, um, which is a concept. I'm not sure if that resonates globally, but pay it forward is essentially you do you're doing something, you know, right now to help somebody down down the road, that sort of thing. So our second year students pay it forward by helping first years through internship. So I see that in a lot of different ways. Again, with the alumni helping out and how how responsive the faculty are, it all truly becomes a part of your network. So that that flexibility that I spoke about, and then just really active and supportive community, really really makes Booth stand apart. Thank you for that. Right. There, there is a question from Divya asking about um, how to demonstrate leadership when, when, uh, when crafting the application. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So leadership does not mean you've had to manage a team. We know many organizations and many functions just don't allow that. There's a lot more lateral and flat organizations these days. So it's talking about how you know, you can give examples of maybe a project where you had to get buy in from another line of business or a colleague or a manager, for that matter, who maybe was hesitant at first. So talking about those examples and and how you have taken initiative is a great one. Uh, another you could do, a, a, for instance, I, I identified this, you know, issue with efficiency in my program or at my, my company. So I came up with this model that now predicts this, things like that. So even if you weren't, you know, if you weren't asked to do it, you took initiative is a really great example to give. And then also just talking about, um, like I said before, just how you've managed those times, like if it's on a, a project, how you hopefully took a leadership role, even if you um, weren't you know, actually the, the manager of that. So hopefully you can think of examples um, at work and then beyond that too. So if you're involved community wise, you might have led a, um, a charity event or something along those lines, feel free to bring in that as well. That shows leadership just as much as your professional experiences. Yeah, and sometimes it can even show more. I mean, if, yes. uh, if you could influence major things without even having power, uh, that's absolutely. So I think that's a wonderful point. Um, so, so Booth is very known for being flexible, especially the curriculum. Uh, now with the pandemic and how things changed, did, did, did Booth adapt its curriculum a little bit, uh, or any of the initiatives that are there? That's a great question. And and look at my calendar now. In a few days or a few couple of weeks, we'll know a lot more. So just coincidentally we were doing a curriculum review, which happens every you know five to seven years, roughly. It wasn't because of the pandemic, it just happened to be going on concurrently. So a lot of things that were part of that discussion were of course, integrating diversity, inclusion, and, um, and those sort of diversity, equity, and inclusion even into the curriculum. So I don't have the exact answers yet, but announcements will start coming out throughout the month of, month of July, how things were changed. So they reevaluate you know, courses, cases, how courses are taught, et cetera. Um, and, and as I said before, there will there will be, you know, we will be back in person, but we're also hoping that for evening weekend, for example, again, this is not set in stone yet, but longer term, that we can allow students to do a certain percentage of their program remotely, you know, for those who, you know, live in Seattle, for example, might be a good option. So that was, yeah, it's a great question. And we'll know a lot more details, I'd say by the end of July, just to be safe, but keep an eye on our website. Um, and this curriculum review really, takes a look at everything. A lot of faculty are involved. They look at, you know, relevance of certain courses and also what are there certain courses students just aren't interested in anymore, right? We try to keep up with our, the interests of the students and uh, trends going on in the market as well. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I have one, oh, sorry, one more thing came to mind. I apologize. 
On the leadership side, there were a lot of changes over the last year and a half. So we've integrated in sessions on inclusive leadership, implicit mm -hmm. biases, these those sort of things, which are just critical for us to all learn how to run. Again, back to that diversity, inclusion and um, diversity, equity and inclusion piece. You know, how can we train leaders that are going to hopefully move um, this? You know, a lot of progress has been made, but there's a lot more progress to go in that area. So we're hoping our students can be agents of change for that. Yeah, especially what, with what happened these last two years, I think uh, exactly. it's about time to, to talk about this uh, issue. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Um, a, a bit of a different question. I've seen also on, on, on YouTube that there are uh, some questions about scholarships. Could you oh, tell us sure. more about that? Absolutely, yes. I'm glad you brought that up. So everyone who submits an application across evening, weekend, and full-time are considered for scholarships. So at Booth, they're all merit-based scholarships. Um, there is one uh, there is an exception called the civic scholars program so if you happen to work for a nonprofit or government and that's the field those are the fields you want to stay in long term you can apply to the civic scholars program feel free to email uh, myself or anna we oversee that program so we can always answer more about that and those you can get up to full tuition which is pretty incredible and that we have a, we can do partial and full but we've been awarding full tuition for those for the last you know Seven, you know, five to eight years at this point. So that's one sidebar. Um, but then the merit-based scholarships, you find out um, for evening weekend, you might get admitted, then find out a few weeks after that. For full-time, you find out when you're admitted, uh, what the scholarship amount is. So they can range anywhere from, you know, 10,000 to, you know, full full tuition, which is less common, but it does happen, as I said, for the, uh, this, uh, excuse me, the Civic Scholars Program. So most students end up using their scholarship and a combination of federal or private student loans, depending on your, your situation, uh, to fund the MBA program. So nothing additional you have to do, no additional essays or anything along those lines. Um, and again, they all, they, like, as I said before, they're all merit-based scholarships at Booth, not needs-based. Okay, wonderful. Um, one last question, because we're approaching the end of uh, our time. Um, so this, this is a common topic as well, and I keep hearing this all the time. Uh, there are some 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 groups of people that apply to to booth and other uh, MBA programs that are overrepresented, and the, the these people try to find something that makes them distinguish and come out of the, of, of this group. So, any advice for such people? Sure, absolutely. I think first of all that that assumption isn't always true. So, if you look at our, our profile stats, yeah, a certain uh, percentage have come from business backgrounds or engineering, et cetera, that are common for business school. But but we those are very important um, students for us as well. So, because we're not a cohorted program, there's not a huge worry that any class is going to be over indexed in a certain industry, et cetera. Our applicable pool is probably more diverse than, than you might assume, which I totally understand the assumption. But how to differentiate yourself is really talk about why Booth. Really get to know Booth. Watch those master classes. You know, look at the curriculum. Hopefully, this resonates with you. This flexibility and choice, and and the supportive community. So, talking about those things can also help you stand out from someone maybe with a similar background who just didn't do their research, right? Um, you talk to students, talk to alumni, and just just being yourself and being candid. Your your unique your value or your perspective is important to us, even if you think it might be similar to someone else's. That's not how we view it. So, you know, again, think about the why Booth piece. Think about any stories or experiences that that are unique to you, which I mean, most of your experiences are unique to you, right? And and really be comfortable sharing those in the application. Yeah, wonderful tip. Thank you, Kara, and thank you very much for for being with us today. Uh, of course, it was my pleasure, and we're happy to for all the the attendees. Feel free to email us, um, myself or Anna. She can put our hotlines up in the chat. If not, of course, the GMAT Club folks can can get us um, get you in touch with us, but. I can't thank uh, the GMAT Club enough for joining us, Sadiq, and, and Kirsty who put this together. Thank you, Anna, for joining. And of course, thank you all for joining us today. I know it's a busy time of year and a, a, just a lot going on in your world. So I really appreciate you um, spending some time to learn about Booth. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, yeah, just before we wrap it up, uh, thank you guys for being with us today and for uh, watching us. Um, if you liked this session, please don't hesitate to like this video, uh, subscribe to the GMAT Club, on YouTube, on the forum, on Facebook, wherever. It's a great resource. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to give us feedback should you have any uh, uh, any to, to give. Uh, one last word. Today's session is sponsored by Fortuna Admissions. Make sure you also check that out. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye.